Give Jesus another big hand of praise. Amen. Tell the person next to you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, how many sense the presence of God here this morning? Amen. I know that, that um, this morning is a very beautiful morning for our church because the Chungs are dedicating their baby. Amen. Baby Jordan. Baby Jordan is in the house. How many love baby Jordan right here? Amen. And he's, a, he's just such a huge part of our, of our family right here, the Victor Irish Hawaiian Islands family. And we just welcome the loved ones that are here um, to join us as we, or we're joining you, we're joining together as we dedicate baby Jordan unto the Lord. We did a lot of praying for, for baby Jordan, right? Because um, for a little bit, he, the, the enemy was trying to hit him. He was in the hospital and, and uh, we were praying because uh, the mumps tried to hit the house, right? And John had uh, John was playing dad, and well, he's your dad. You you're, you're playing, you're really dad, right? But but he had to step it up to even another level. He had he isolated Pina in a room, but even longer than he should have. We we're like free Pina, free Pina, right? And um, and, and but don't you love the chunks? Amen. They're one of the they're just they're just such a beautiful couple in the church. Amen. And, and uh, before we go on, maybe you guys could testify and what God has done in your lives. And, and why did you name him Jordan? OK, well, uh, um, amen, church. Uh, we just uh, like thank God for our salvation and uh, what God's done in our lives. You know, um, we weren't supposed to be together, but you know what? God uh, restored us, amen. He brought us back together, and it was through just the, the grace that God has upon all of us, amen, and we just accepted it. And um, you know what? Uh, um, Jordan was, is, is a really awesome blessing, amen. And, and it came through a little rocky point within our, in our lives and our marriage, you know what I mean? But um, like, our home, uh, like our home director says, you know, God knows exactly what you need with the seasoning you're in. He blessed us with Jordan and uh, he knew my heart and he knew that if I had another girl, I was gonna have my second heart attack, you know? So he had mercy, <laughs> mercy and grace upon us, you know what I mean? And um, we named him Jordan actually, not after my um, addiction to sneakers, but... Um, <laughs> After after one of, um, one of our favorite series that Pastor preached about crossing the Jordan, you know, and and um, I got this, and we named him Jordan because because we believe that 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 this boy is going to be a, a, the cha the changing of a, a a bloodline within our family. You know what I mean? The the first. You know, the first chung that's going to serve God and, and just be born into God, you know what I mean? I know a lot of us chungs, I know my family's here, I know we face a lot of struggles. <sighs> you know, our I know our family, we faced a lot of generational curses, you know what I mean? A lot of changes and a lot of bondages on all of us. I'm so glad to see you guys here, you know what I mean? Because this boy has brought you into the house of God. I can't wait to see what God's going to do with this child, let alone already bring you, bring my family into the house of God. I know there's greatness within him, and he's going to be a chung that's going to change change the bloodline where, where the chung's going to be known as people who serve God wholeheartedly. You know, and... Uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys. You guys serve such an awesome uh, part in our lives, praying for, praying and interceding for, interceding for Jordan and being a part of our, our salvation, you know what I mean? So you guys mean the world to us, you know, and, and um, it's an honor to, to make you guys godparents. Before we have Pina testify, maybe you could tell us who's who up here and, and what role do they play? Oh, yeah. This is Lani Paza. Amen. <laughs> she's, she's, um very dear to our hearts you know uh she's always there for us and um she you know she's 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 so loving to jordan you know what i mean and loving to our family there's there's no way we couldn't have her a part of jordan's life and, and you know the campos is you know they're 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 our, our our dear brothers and sisters in the lord and and um they've been been with us since the beginning and and uh do i even need to introduce the carillos amen there's such a there's such a blessing in our lives and i thank 
thank Matt and Tamika for taking up pastor's mantle of having four four girls and the uh, and the boy for for not not having to, for us to follow those footsteps anymore and. <laughs> And, and Jimmy and Angela, you know, you guys are, are so awesome uh, and so loving to us and, and, and to Jordan, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's such a blessing to have you in your lives. And the Meganias. Sorry, it's emotional this morning. But, um... You know, when you when you actually talk about, like, you know, oh man, you know what? If it wasn't if it wasn't for so and so, that you wouldn't be in this place. And you know what? If it wasn't for you guys. one time when I felt like I was out of it and I didn't and I wasn't going to come this Sunday I woke up I was at home I wasn't playing anything playing do anything I opened up my eyes and it was Pastor Tootie <laughs> first off I was like who let you in here But you know what, he, he told me, man, you know what, no one left behind. I thank you for it. And you know the, the modelship of a man that you've shown me, it would be an honor that you continue to show me so I can show my son. The same with you, Melissa, you know, we love you and you're our lives. Amen. It's here from Mama. Hey Amen. They're all our godparents. They're Jordan's godparents. <laughs> um, we're very blessed. Um, as you all know, we were into that season where, no, we're done with babies. We're done. But little do we know, God had a plan, you know. God had a plan for us to have Jordan. And we just thank all of you for praying for him, and, you know, and our pastors, thank you guys for loving us. Um, taking us in and also showing us, you know, what a great man of God and woman of God you guys are in our lives also. Um, you guys, you know, when I was in isolation, you made a video of saying, free Pina! I am free of all my sins, amen? <laughs> and all the moms. <laughs> but uh, I just want to thank my family members for being here and my in-laws and my dad's brother. He's here and his wife. It was only God that Jordan brought our family into this house of the Lord, amen? And we just thank all of you for being here. We're very grateful very, very grateful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Duty, can you get the mic and you see a prayer for Jordan? Amen. We're going to pray that just that God's hand just would continue. We know God's hands already on his life. Amen. I want you to stand with us and stretch your hands towards him because this is something beautiful. And it's not just mom and dad's responsibility, but it's all of our responsibilities to keep Jordan in prayer. Amen. To cover him in prayer and to be good examples and show him the ways of God. Amen. Jesus was dedicated at the temple in the book of Luke chapter two. And uh, we follow that same model. Amen. And later on, we believe he's going to be, be, get baptized in water. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want you to stretch your hands towards them because we believe that Jordan belongs to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Fa Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we lift up baby Jordan to you, my God. And we believe and we know, my God, that we are praying for a child of promise, my God, a child that was bathed in, in prayer and expectation and belief of, of your word, my God. Lord, we, we pray, my God, that you would be with them, God, that you place a hedge of protection around them, God. We know that there is no child too young to receive your spirit, my God. Lord, we pray for your anointing, God. We pray for your power, God, just to saturate them, God, that, Lord, God, as your word 
word says that, Lord God, if you would train a child in your ways that when he grows old, he would not depart, my God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for us, God, as the God parents, God, and even as a church, God, that you help us, God, to, to lead and be good examples, God, and direct and guide them, God, and bathe them in prayer and exampleship, my God. Lord, we pray for John and Pina, God, that you be with them, God, that you continue to raise them up, God, as a dynamic couple, Lord God, a couple that's after your heart, my God, and we just thank you, God, and we, we come before you in a, in a prayer of just believing and knowing, God, that powerful and mighty things are, are up ahead, my God, and we just thank you, God, for this privilege to, Lord God, and we thank you for what you're going to do, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, amen, and amen. Come on, give the Lord a good hand, amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand of praise. Amen. We're going to turn it over to Brother Matt and Sister Tamika. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Give them a big hand. I, I believe that God's going to speak to people today. Amen. And I believe that God's going to get a hold of some lives. I believe you are in the right place. You're in the right place. God has you here. You're, it's a divine appointment for you to be here. This is... Um, a, a month or you know even a week that people talk about love a lot because it's valentine's week right or, you know people so people talk about love and things like that but let me tell you there's no love like god's love and we don't know love unless we know god and so it's so important i believe for us to fall in love with god yesterday we were with a lot of different people we had the table set up here and we had a time that we called the holy rollers we, how many know we are holy rollers, amen? <laughs> Rolling through cities with the gospel, amen? And that's why you see the decoration like this. This also represents that we're all in for God, amen? Just like people go to Vegas and go, I'm all in. How many know we are all in for God, amen? And because of that, we are what? What does this shirt say? We are what? We are blessed. I know the chest part pops up at you. You're like, I don't know. It's, 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 like, it's like big from there, and then it's in from the bottom and yeah don't mean to distract you amen but i got blessed with this shirt amen uh, last week one of the guys was wearing one and, and then he blessed he blessed me with it because the title of this sermon is we are blessed or this series we're blessed and we see in ephesians that we are blessed paul was working with the people in ephesus and he was showing them how to be christians they were a lot like many of us they didn't serve God. They didn't, they didn't have come, come from a family that, of pastors and preachers and, 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 and saints. Come on, somebody. They were more like ain'ts, like many of us. Amen? <laughs> the Ephesian church, they were, they were a church that were like, like many of us, that they were treasures, but they were in darkness. And God rescued them out of darkness. Now they were treasures out of darkness. And so they needed to learn how to live this Christian life. Wave at me if you're still learning to live the Christian life. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm so, some of you ain't waving like if you got it down pack. Maybe you need a, a wave because you got some pride acting like you got it together. Amen. Hello. My wife and I, we've been serving God 26 years. We'll be, we'll be the first to tell you that we need to wave both hands in the air. Amen. Because we, don't, we still need to learn. You know, I still got to ask God, God, help me to be a husband. God, help me to be a dad. God, help me to, to, to fulfill your call. We need his spirit. We need his presence in our lives. And the scripture we just read, it talks about just like, look, look at this in, in Ephesians 3.20. It says, now to him who is able, it lets us know God's ability. God is able. He's able to do it. I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know what you're asking for. I don't know what you need to believe God for. But God is able. And he says, to him who is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than we could ask for. That means whatever you're asking for, God is saying, man, you're asking for small stuff. I could do way bigger than that. I could do way more than that. Whatever, maybe you need some restoration, your life restored, or your family restored. God is saying, I'm not just going to restore your family. I'm not just going to give you back what you lost. I'm going to bless you even above that. Come on, somebody. How many claim that in Jesus' name? That's what he says. He says, he says to do immeasurably more than all we ask or even imagine. In other words, we could even, how many know we, we should just trip out and just be in the presence of the Lord and just trip and just have some visions of, of the big things God could do. Amen? 
And when you're using your imagination and the spirit like that, God is saying, I'm going to do even bigger than that. I'm going to do even better than that. How many know God got big stuff in, ahead of us? Amen? God has big stuff in store for you and I. He does. And there's three things I, I want us to learn just in regards to, um, you know, because it says it, it ends by saying, according to his power that is at work within us. The work of God, tell the person next to you, God's still at work in me. God's still at work in me. You see, that's what he's saying. He said, according to the power that is at work within us. The, the power of the Spirit of God is at work within us right now. He's working on us. He doesn't just work on us on a Monday. He'll work on you while you're at work, while you're at your school, while you're with your family, when you're by yourself. He is at, when you're going through a trial, through good, bad, ugly, God is at work in us. God's power is at work within us, inside of us. Inside of us. How many know we need some heart surgery? Amen? Some of us are facing some heart attacks. And we need God to be at work within us, within our hearts. And he is. And when God gets a hold of us, let me tell you, there's, there's three things I want to mention to you. We need, we, uh, uh, in regards to needing his spirit, because I believe we need to crave God. I believe we need to crave him. I believe we need to pursue him. One, we need, we need his spirit and presence in our lives to change. In order for you and I to change, we need his presence in our lives. And boy, do we need to change, especially coming from the lifestyles we came from, we need to change. And Paul was sharing with the Ephesus church that, hey, you know, God could change you. You can do it. And, and, you know, you read, go ahead and go to chapter four, verse one, chapter four, verse one, it talks about different things. It says, Paul says, as a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Tell the person next to you, you got a call on your life. You're prophesying to them. You're speaking as a voice piece for God right there by saying that. And it is true. And you know what God is saying? Walk worthy of the call. Walk worthy of the call. How many know we already know we're not worthy of the call? Amen? Paul even says, it. He's, he's like, man, it's by the grace of God. By the grace of God that he, he, he said, man, I'm the least of all you guys. We look at him like the most. He looked at himself as the least. But he says, he says look at, walk worthy of it. Walk worthy. In other words, if he was challenging us to walk worthy, that means we could walk worthy. I said we could walk worthy. We can walk a walk that is pleasing to the Lord. You may say, but I can't. Uh, my, my mouth, my mind, the way, the way I am. It just, no, you can do it. He's placed a call, and he hasn't just placed a call on your life. He's placed his spirit in your life. And his spirit will help us to walk worthy of the call that we have. We got to walk worthy. It's important. A lot of times people will have a call and they don't walk worthy. And boy, people have a field day with that stuff, don't they? They look and say, man, look at how he is. Look at how she is. He's a leader and he's like that. And, and, and we need to walk worthy. And they may be coming from a bad spirit, but they are right in saying we need to walk worthy. And it goes on in verse 2 of chapter 4. Be completely, this is what being walking worthy means. This is the new us, what the new version of us should look like. Verse 2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Isn't that heavy? And then it goes on. I want you to skip over to... um, Look at, skip over to verse 14. Or excuse me, um, yeah, 14 is good. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves. How many know we don't want to get tossed around no more? 
Then we no longer be no lo- then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. How many know we got to be careful what we're feeding ourselves? We got to be careful who's influencing us, that we're not being led astray. Let, let me share with you something. Be careful how you talk. Be careful. What you, when you're giving your opinion, be careful with that because teachers will be more strictly judged. And you may think that only implies to like pastors because we teach. But let me tell you, if you talk, you teach. When you're talking, you're teaching. When we're giving our opinions on things or we're posting our opinions, come on, somebody, you're preaching. I don't know how many friends you have following you on social media, but that's the size of your congregation. And everything you post... You're, you're, you're promoting, you know, you're, you're, and, and the Bible says we'll be strictly judged when we teach. Did you know that? It talks about that in the book of James. So how many know we got to be careful when we're trying to lead people certain ways or with, to have the mentality we have? We should be, like Paul says, we have the mind of Christ, amen? We need to promote the mind of Christ and his ways. And so we got to be careful. Verse, chapter 4, verse 15, it said, Instead, speaking the truth in love. That's how we got to teach people in love. Not just legalistically, uh, you know, harshly, but t- speaking the truth, but in love. We will grow and become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Amen. And then I want you to skip over to um, verse 17. In the middle part of verse 17, or let me read verse 17 to the beginning. It says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. You know what what, what he's talking about? He's saying he's talking about their former life because they were Gentiles. And he's saying, You must no longer live like the Gentiles do. In the the futility, in other words, they they, they live purposely, purposeless thinking. How many know that that we we don't longer, we shouldn't live the way worldly people live? We're in this world, but we are not of this world. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, that we are part of of the household of God. We're part of God's household. So so God is saying, hey, you're part of my household. That house may act that way. That house may act that way. But this house doesn't act that way. We are no longer Gentiles. Amen? Living like Gentiles. Skip over to verse 19. It says, having lost their their, their sensitivity... They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are all full of greed. Right now, during Valentine's, you got to be careful that that spirit of lust doesn't get a hold of you. Got to be careful, young people, older people. Come on, somebody. Kids, everybody. That spirit of lust doesn't have an age limit, amen? That's not just for teenagers. And, and this church, they struggled with, with just, you know, getting hit with perversion and sexual immorality, just like people in our era, in our days, get hit, just like many possibly in this room as well. You may struggle with different things like that. But God is able to help, to help each and every one of us, Amen? The church in Ephesus was, there, there was, it was a, a, a pagan city, you know, where one of their, as a matter of fact, they had one of the seven wonders of, you know, you hear the seven wonders of the world? They had one of them there. And that place was a place of, of worship to a, to a pagan god, to a false god called Diana. And, um, and not only Diana, but it had a previous theme as well. And um, with one of the things that they would do in that temple is literally part of worship was sexual acts inside the church, inside part of worship. 
So they had a real strong spirit of perversion. How many know that God is able to deliver people from sexual immorality? Amen. Many of us, we came to the church, you know, used to sleep around. Maybe, maybe you know, even if you were going to get married or even if you got married, adultery was going to come in, you know. And even nowadays with, with, with the Internet, you know, social media or, or th- different things like that, that new devices the Bible talks about. In the Old Testament, it talks about new devices and things like that. And even today, still new devices and new opportunities to sin when you're talking about, you know, looking at things on the Internet that, that, that is not of the Lord, you know, pornography, different things like that. And, but God is able. They struggled with these things, fornicating, partying, you know, um, adultery, all these different things. They struggled with these things. And Paul was telling them, hey, you know what? You got God now. You don't got to live like you used to live. You don't got to live like the Gentiles. I know everyone around you lives like that, but you don't have to. And in verse 20, he says, however, it is not the way of life you've learned. How many know we're learning how to live life in the Lord? Amen? We're learning we are learning not to start cussing when we're mad, not to go smoke a cigarette when we're upset, not to cheat on our, our spouse when we're mad at them. No, we're learning to be Christians, amen? People, men of God, women of God, couples that serve the Lord. Verse 22 says, you, you were taught with regards to your former, life, for, for, to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. How many know our old self is corrupt? And we got to put off our old self, it says. Verse 23, to be, to be made new, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. How many know that, that, that God is renewing our minds? Touch your mind and say, Lord, renew my mind. God's renewing your mind. God's renewing your mind. You may wonder where did that thought, those thoughts come from out of nowhere. You just got out of prayer. God's renewing your mind. You're going to leave church and, and the enemy's going to throw darts in your, in your mind. But God's renewing your mind. We got to be patient with one another. Amen. Got to be patient because God is renewing us. He's renewing the attitude of our minds. Verse 24, it says, and put on the new self. Put on the new self. Every day, you got to wake up and put on the new self. Even throughout the day, you got to put on the new self. The old you would have reacted this way, but you're a new self. Created to be like God. Imagine that. You and I were created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. At one time, we went so far from that. We were so not living righteous and holy. But today, we have our new self in the Lord. We got our new mind. And he says we were created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So he goes on, and he's preaching. Verse 25 says, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and, pre- and, and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we're all members of one body. If in, in your anger, do not sin. In other words, you're going to get angry, but don't sin when you get angry. He says, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil a foothold. So you got to live your life in a way that, wait, if I'm doing that, am I, am I opening the door even a little bit for the devil? It says, don't give the devil a foothold. Verse 28, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. How many know we got to be people of integrity and honesty? That's what it's talking about, but must work. Oh, that, that's a bad word for some people. Look at that. Verse 28. Again, anyone, anyone who is stealing must steal no longer, but must work. That's a word of God for somebody. God is saying you got to get a job. Amen? Doing something useful with your hands. 
that they may have something to share with those in need. Look at that. God is saying, look, you got to be a blessing. you got to not be a taker, but be a giver. Verse 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. How many know that whatever comes out of our mouth should not be unwholesome, but it should be to edify and build people up, amen? That it may benefit those who listen. Verse 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We always got to be very sensitive to God, to the Spirit of God, not to grieve the Spirit of God by the way we behave. He says, within whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Amen? Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness. Some of us are here. Maybe you've been, you know, abused. You've been molested. You've been, you know, treated wrong. You've been, you know, gossiped about. You've been misunderstood. And the bitterness is eating you up inside towards a certain someone or certain people. And God is saying here in verse 31, get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness. Get, get rid of all rage. Get rid of all anger. Some of us, we struggle with rage. We struggle with anger. And God is saying, I'm going to deliver you today. God's going to deliver some people from bitterness. Deliver some people from rage. Deliver some people from anger and brawling and, and slandering. You know, slandering. Slandering is when, when you feel a certain way against someone and you're trying to get other people to feel the same way towards them. Along with every form of malice, it says, be kind. See, this is the new us. He's talking about the new us and the former us. and This is us. This is how members of his household behave. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Tell the person next to you, God forgave you. Tell the person on the other side, God forgave you. Someone say, thank you, Lord. In, in chapter 5, verse 1, or verse 2, he says, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we need to walk in love. And then in verse 3 he says, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Look at that. There must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. I want you to say, God, make me pure. Say, God, purify my heart. He says, or any kind of impurity or, or, or of greed. You'd be surprised how often the word greed is in the Bible and how greed hinders us from, from, from entering even into the kingdom of God because these are improper to God's holy people, he says. Nor should there be obscenity, in other words, filthiness, um, um, foolish talk, coerced joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. So we got to even be careful that we're not saying talking nasty or, or cussing or saying jokes that are inappropriate. Can I laugh if they're funny? No, we shouldn't even do that. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> it goes on in verse 5. For of this you can be sure, no, no immoral, impure. Look at what he's mentioning, the people that he just, we just talked about, that he just talked about. There's a result to behaving in these ways. No immoral, impure, or greedy person. Such a person is an idolater and, ha and has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Christ and of God. In other words, people like that don't go to heaven. How many know we, we got to change? How many know we need the Spirit of God to change? We need the Spirit of God to change. Secondly, I'm going to go through these next two real quick, okay? We need the Spirit of God to change 
We need the Spirit and the presence of God in our lives to change. Two, we need the Spirit and the presence of, in our lives to accomplish the call. We need His Spirit in our lives to accomplish the call of God on our lives. We need His Spirit. We need the Spirit of God in us just to accomplish what God has for us. God has something for you, amen? God has great things in store for you. And if you could put up there Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 11. Ephesians 4, verse 11. The Bible says this. These are different calls that people may have. So Christ himself gave, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. It's, that's what we call the fivefold ministry. So Christ himself gave the apostles. Some of you have an apostolic anointing. Come on, somebody. You know what that's talking about? Church planting. Apostles would, were, were leaders of leaders, and they would plant churches. How many want to be church planters? How many want to see churches planted? How many want to do missionary work for God? Amen. Well, it says right here that the uh, the missionary spirit has to do with the apostolic spirit as well. And he gave some of us calls like that. Then he says some to be prophets. Prophets are people who they may interpret tongues or something like that. Or, you know, prophets also, they're, they're, they're a voice piece for God. So in other words, sometimes when God is using you, you're being like a voice piece for the Lord. Like God is saying, hey, tell this person that or preach this or teach that. That's being, uh, being used prophetically in a sense. And then there's some that hold the office of the prophet. That's different, right? But then there's also the gift of the prophet. Then there's the evangelist, soul winners, people who are just... Constantly wanting to win people to Jesus. Amen? There's some of you, you have an anointing like that. You have a desire to see a lot of people come to Jesus. And that's what he's talking about, the evangelist. And then there's the pastor. People who have a a shepherd's heart, they look around and they get concerned. They didn't see so-and-so here today. So they wonder how he's doing, how she's doing. Then there's, you know, then there's the teacher. Those who teach people and disciple people. And, and we're going to dabble into all of those, but you're probably going to lean on one a little more than others. There's the office of it. Then there's the function of it. You may not have the title, but it's not about the title. But then it goes on. It says, these people, those individuals who do hold the office of these, these positions... God will raise up and they'll be, you know, they'll be ordained to be these things. And they will hold the office, the spiritual authority to do that. And why are they doing that? Verse 12, to equip his people. How many know we're the people? Amen. To equip his people for what now? For works of service. So you may think that it's pastor's job, Pastor Tony's job, Pastor Duty's job. Soon to be Pastor Matt's job. Come on, somebody. He oversees our Honolulu campus, and he's the one who's been running our gang ministry for, I don't know, like seven, eight years or something like that. And he's, he's a pastor by function, just not by office yet. Amen? But it's going to happen. We believe it, right? Well, it's not just our job to do the ministry. Actually, our job is to equip you. Look at verse 12 again. Those people that hold that office are to equip his people, verse 12, his his people, God's people, for works of service. So we're equipping the people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So it's your job to get involved and to serve. In closing, we need a spirit and presence in our lives to change. We need his spirit and presence in our lives to accomplish the call. We talked about the different calls there that people have. And thirdly, we need his spirit and presence in our lives to fulfill roles. To fulfill roles. God is going to give you roles. You have different roles in your life. And some of you, you're a husband. You're a wife. And in, in Ephesians chapter 5 
tells us some of the things that we are to do as husband and wife. Go to verse 21. It says in verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we should all have a submissive spirit. Amen? All of us are called to have a submissive spirit as reverence unto Christ. Verse 22, this is my favorite scripture in the Bible. I love this Bible, this, the Bible and the scripture. I love this scripture. Verse 22. Babe, are you writing it down? Why are your arms crossed? <laughs> Write this down. <laughs> Ephesians 5.22. Wives, husbands, say it loud. <laughs> Wives. <laughs> Look, at some of the guys are scared. <laughs> See the era we're living in? Wives, submit. Submit yourselves to your own husband. It's interesting it says your own husband, because some people can submit to other people's husbands. Some of you are like, pastor said to do that. You submit to pastor, you submit to that leader, but submit to your husband too. Come on, somebody. Come on, husbands. I'm backing you up here. Now, wives, I, I got to say this. Wives, your obedience isn't dependent on his obedience. A lot of people like to say, well, I'll submit. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll practice verse 20. What, what verse was that? Verse 22. If he practices verse 25, go to verse 25. Real quick. This one, we just want to scan through it real quick. Amen. <laughs> I'm just not feeling led that we need to emphasize this one right here today. Husbands, what does it say? Sisters, say it. Husbands, what? Love your wives. Love your wives. How many know, man, we need to be loving. Now, in the same way, men, we, are, we have to be obedient whether they're being obedient or not. Let me tell you, our obedience as individuals should never be based on other people's obedience. You got to answer the call of God whether I answer it or not. You're going to know people that unfortunately sometimes there's casualties of war. They fall away, they drift away, and it could be leaders and it could hurt you, but you cannot let it affect you to the point where you're going to be in disobedience. Amen? You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. That's even as a, as a husband and even as a wife, you got to submit as a wife. Even if he's not being loving and husband, you got to be loving even if she's not being submissive. Now, the chances increase. If you're loving, she will likely, you know, be more submissive and respectful. Sisters, you got double the job. Come on, somebody. Sisters, say ouch. Because in verse 33, this one's for you too. Come on. God, God says, I'm going to talk to you double. Amen. I'm going to get in trouble. Amen? How does verse 33 end? Wife must what? Are you guys losing momentum. What's going on here? You guys got depressed. Look at that. Sisters are sad. Wife must, and the wife must respect her husband. So wives got to be submissive and, and respectful. Husbands got to be loving. Right? And you know what? You may say, man, I don't know how to be loving. I was never taught love. I was, you know, let me tell you, I grew up in an abusive household. My mother's here today, you know. So many of you know her story. She was uh, abused, you know, and for many, many, many years, many, many, many years, you know. She's still a little, you know, broken about that. But how many know God, God heals, amen? God, God heals. God gets a hold of lives. And you know what? God, God will reteach us. We have to relearn some things. I'm asking the worship team to make their way. When you come to God, we become disciples. You don't just get saved. you got to become a disciple. And as disciples, we become learners. And as learners, we have to relearn things. you got to beg the Lord, God, help me to be a wife, a good wife, a godly wife. God, help me to be a good husband, a godly husband. 
We have to learn these things. And it's not to, to, to put down or diss the former generation. How many know probably it wasn't exemplified to them either, maybe? Amen? And so we're sensitive to that, of course. But God is able. You could be that husband that God called you to be. Hear me now. God, God could help you and turn you into that husband that he wants you to be and that your wife needs and that your children need. God could help you to become that wife that your husband needs and your children need. God could help you. Maybe it's been hard for you. Maybe it is hard for you. It's challenging for you. But listen, we're, we're, we're breaking things in Jesus' name. Amen? And we're part of the, God's household now. And God's doing a new thing in your life. And so that's why number three in closing was what? We need his spirit and presence in our lives to fulfill our roles. Your role as a husband, your role as a wife, you need God's spirit to fulfill that. You need God's spirit to fulfill that. Amen? I'm asking you to stand. and We're blessed. I said we are blessed. We're blessed that God... Jesus died on the cross for us and he made available to us the Spirit of God. Someone say, thank you, Lord. I, I close your eyes and just be in worship right now. Just be in, in, in worship right now and just thank him because he made his Spirit available for you and me. We have his Spirit available for us. And he, he will help you become that pastor. Some of you, you're going to be pastors. And you need God to be a pastor. Some of you, you're, God's going to anoint you to just be a soul evangelist. You're going to be an evangelist. You're going to be a missionary, some of you. Some of you are going to plant churches. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray right now, my God, for every person in this room right now. I pray, God, that your spirit, God, would get a hold of everyone, my God. God, that your presence would get a hold of our lives, God. God, we need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, God. We need you, Lord God, so, so we could change. We need you to, for, to, so we could fulfill our, the call that you have on us. And we need you to fulfill our roles within our households, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't God. let me leave. This altar 